Hello and welcome back to another video of the Brainy Heart. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of the heart. Let's dive right in. First, let's start off by labeling the parts of the heart. Let's start off by labeling the parts that we already know. In the last video, I said that there were the heart has two atria's and two ventricles. And this is the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. And we also talked about the septum, which is the wall that separates the two sides of the heart. This vein right here is called the inferior vena cava. Here is called the superior vena cava. This is the inferior because it's at the bottom of the heart and this is the superior vena cava because it's at the top of the heart. These veins right here, we'll talk about why these veins are red in color. These are called the pulmonary veins. This artery right here is the, again, we'll talk about why the artery is blue in color later in this video. And this big artery is called the aorta. It's actually the largest blood vessel in the human body. It's called the aorta. A O R T A, aorta. Those are all the veins and arteries in the heart. Pretty simple, right? Just one, two, three, four. Four arteries and veins. Pretty easy, but we'll talk more about them, what, where they go, and what they do, okay? Let's finish labeling the heart before that. The only things that are left are the valves. This valve right here is the mitral valve. It's also called the bicuspid valve, but I like to call it the mitral valve. This is the tricuspid valve. It's also called the right atrioventricular valve. We'll talk about, we'll talk more about what atrioventricular is. This is the pulmonary valve. And this is the aortic valve. All right, now that we have all of the parts cleared, let's talk more about what these thing, what these do. Let's start off by talking about the superior and inferior vena cavas. The vena cavas bring in deoxygenated blood from all over the body to the heart. The inferior vena cava brings in deoxygenated blood from the lower half of the body and the superior vena cava brings in blood from the upper half of the body from the vena cavas the bl deoxygenated blood goes to the right atrium from there it goes through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. Now let me just take a, f a little bit time just to explain. Now let me explain what the valves are for. The valves are really important. If the valves were not there, the heart wouldn't function properly. Valves are like toll booths in a highway. There are these gates that are op that open and close to let cars through. 
In this case, the car is replaced by the blood. There are four valves, like we talked about when we were labeling the heart. The two valves that separate separate the atrias and ventricle, ventricles are called the atrioventricular valves. Those two together are com combined are called atrioventricular valves. The valves at the base of the two arteries in the heart are called the semilunar valve. Those two combined are called se semilunar valve, but this is the tricuspid valve. This is the mitral valve, this is the aortic valve, and this is the pulmonary valve. You can also find valves in almost every vein. This is because the veins are defying gravity to pull back the blood to the heart. And it, it is really hard, and gravity has a tendency to pull down the blood. So valves are there to keep the blood going backwards, avoiding the trap of gravity. Now, let's get back to discussing the flow of blood through the heart. From the right ventricle, it goes, to the, it goes through the pulmonary valve and into the pulmonary arteries. This right here is also the pulmonary artery. Let's say continuation. The pulmonary artery takes the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. In the lungs, there are these air sacs or small organs called the alveolus. The alveolus take in the carbon dioxide and the deoxygenated blood and give the blood oxygen. You might be wondering where the alveolus gets its oxygen. Well, it's, big, it's from what you breathe in. When you breathe in the oxygen, it goes to both the lungs and then finally ends up in the alveolus where it gets exchanged for CO2. And that is why you breathe that CO2 and not oxygen again. After the blood is oxygenated, it comes back through the pulmonary veins. The reason why I colored the arteries blue and the veins red is this is because the veins in this case are car carrying oxygenated blood and the arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood. If you remember from the last video, this happens in the pulmonary circuit. That is the circulation of blood between the heart and the lungs. From from the pulmonary veins, it all the oxygenated blood goes to your left atrium. From your left atrium, it goes through the mitral valve and then into the left ventricle. From there, it goes into the aortic valve and then finally ends up in the aorta. I like to think of the aorta as the main train station, and these arteries are the train tracks that separate and go to other train stations. And and th these are these arteries these arteries become uh, separate into other smaller arteries, and finally end up in a. Uh, final destination which in this case is the organs tissues or cells then the cycle repeats again that once the oxygenated blood goes to your organs cells or tissues the tissues organs and cells produce co2 as a waste material after taking in the oxygen and the uh, co2 um, makes the blood deoxygenated and then it's brought in by the sur superior and inferior vena cava and the process repeats again. I hope you have understood the blood flow through the heart and the basic anatomy of the heart. That is the end of today's video.
I hope you enjoyed it and, and learned a lot from it. I'm always open to comments, suggestions, and questions. Also, check out my blog at brainyhearts.wordpress.com. I'll catch you later in the next video. This is the Brainy Heart signing off.